Yo, this is your boy David Lucas, and I'm here with uh, the infamous Rick Diaz. What's happening, bro? I don't know if I'm infamous, but I'm Yo, good, man. I think infamous is the best way to be. All right. I mean, you and Hans had this thing building up for quite a while. I'd say that's infamy. All right. You don't think so? I, I'll take it. The bastard from Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up, man. How yeah. you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling uh, pretty happy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, regardless of the outcome, you still made a statement and a name yeah. for yourself, right? I think so. I think that that was the main point, just try to show what I can do to a bigger crowd and yeah. to, you know, come come into a bigger stage than where I was before. Right on, right on. Yeah. Um, so how is comedy in Brussels? Comedy in Brussels is a, a smaller scene. Is a, overall, I would say, um, there's a French scene, French-speaking scene, mm -hmm. which is bigger. Um, because it's a predominant language, and then uh -huh. there's a smaller English amateur scene with that also brings some, you know, European headliners, British headliners. Okay. And they and they do bigger shows, but it's like you know, once a, one one or two venues a month bring like bigger headliners. Oh, nice, nice. And then in terms of local comedians, it's uh, maybe there's maybe like a hundred French-speaking comedians, something like that. And in can you Engl speak French? Yeah, fluently. Really? Yeah, I, I grew up in Belgium. I moved. We moved. My family moved when we were, when I was seven. So you speak Spanish and French. Yep. That's dope as hell, bro. Yeah. Let's see. And, I, and I may, I'm, I'm predominantly uh, performing in French because there are more opportunities. Really? In terms of spots. Yeah. So on right. the daily, I'm performing in French and then maybe like, maybe twice a week in English. Oh, nice. So you could yeah. like <clears throat> tour in Canada. Yeah, that's the hope. I would like to do that this year or next year. Oh, sure. right on, right yeah. on, bro. Heck yeah. Have any management companies or agencies reached out to you? Some. Yeah. Yeah. You gonna sign with one? Probably. Agen agencies, not yet. I'm looking for that. Would you ever move to America? I would move to America for part of the year at this point. You like being in Brussels? I like being in Brussels. I, I lived abroad for my day job for 11 years. I was in Asia for 11 years wow. consecutively. What was your day job? I work for the European Union. I do contracts. I okay. make sure contract I'm, I'm procurement. So it's a very nice. like administrative legal work, but I was living in Laos, then China, then Thailand. And I, I missed my family and my friends for 11 years. Damn. <coughs> so you never went home in those 11 I years? I went home, but like once or twice a year. So, so you're, you're a family guy? No, I'm, I'm not a, a, an extreme family guy, but I would like to be able to see my friends and family more than <laughs> twice a year, you know what I mean? It's just expensive, okay. it's just the money was, yeah, you know, yeah. cost money to go back from there. And how long is that flight from Asia to Brussels? Pooh, like 13, 13 yeah, 13, 13 14 yeah. hours, yeah. Because how long did it take you to fly here? Uh, eight or nine. That's not bad. But not direct, so like 13 total, something like that. So why don't you just take a... Because you're not far from London, right? No, I, can, I could go to London. It's like two, three hours. There's a direct flight from London to Atlanta. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, there's, I took... I, it's shorter via Amsterdam for me. Oh, okay. So it's Brussels, Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Austin, direct. How's the scene in Amsterdam? I haven't done it yet. London, you did London? I've done London. Uh, it was nice. What, yeah. I like about, what I like in London is the crowds. The crowds are educated in comedy. Really? So they get comedy immediately. They know what you're doing. You need to explain your character and your persona. They're used oh, wow. to all types of humor. In Brussels, there's a very young crowd. Like, young not in age, but in, in understanding comedy. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they're like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, who, why, why is he... Why is he talking about this? So like, because I'll say sad stuff, you know, like yeah. I'll say stuff about you know being sad and wanting to die and being right. depressed and all that, and they're like, "This is sad." It's like you know, but it's it's a joke. That's I'm saying because it's funny to me. Like getting the joke with me. It, it, it's so they don't they don't really get like personas. They do, but it's it's taking time. We have to like teach them. Like it's okay to laugh. It's right, I, right. It, I'm bringing humor here. It's not. But they gotcha. take they think they're so far. They're still a bit. Well, you're supposed to be just telling me what you actually think. And not be ironic about it, you know yeah, what I mean? So it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's okay, it's fun. It's uh, it, it, when I manage to kill there, I know that that's gonna that joke is gonna work outside. Nice. So when you went back after your first time being on yeah. Tony, were you like a hero? I don't know if hero is the right word, but definitely uh, towards. In the English-speaking community, the people that knew about Kill Tony, because I mean, we're far away, you know, right. so okay, Kill Tony is known, and I've been recognized by people randomly in the weirdest places, right. but overall, it's not been, like, as crazy as here. But, yeah, for comedians, what they were saying is, like, man, like, 
we are doing we're doing these open mics at a bar we're doing you know we're trying to like build the scene we're right. we're we're opening for this guy or that guy but like maybe the dream is to get to a bigger stage in, in Amsterdam or go to London but like no you but you managed to do something for yourself there while working your jokes here right so now we have a little like a little blueprint that it's possible that we are working hard and it means something to us like gotcha. so it's more of a it's, it's like an example that it could be done, it mm. can be done. That's what's up. So you're like the inspiration. Yeah, and, I, and there, are, there are comedian friends of mine in Brussels who are, I consider better than me mm -hmm. and who are just funny, like just funny as hell. Mm -hmm. But maybe because I have families and kids, it's hard for them to go. Or it's right. hard, but it's like, oh, it, it could be done. Like, and, and, you know, now we know we, we can benchmark ourselves differently uh. thanks to this. <clears throat> like we have more value. True. We're such a small scene, you know. So how many comedians would you say is in the Brussels community group? In the English-speaking scene, I would say not more than 50. Fifth, not more than 50? No. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I can't, I, can't, I can't count all of the open micers or I could just suddenly do a couple spots, but, you know, I would yeah. say less than 50. So is anybody over there making a living from comedy in Brussels? In English? Yeah. Not really. We all have day jobs. So, like, the French-speaking might? In the French-speaking, there, are, there are some professionals oh, uh, nice. that are making a good living. But all of them still like, well, they'll invest in clubs, they'll do things, they'll do other things, they'll do TV gigs, they'll do whatever they can. Um, but, but they're all, you know, like local language scenes. Like in Spain, there's going to be Spanish comedians and they end up on Spanish TV. Right. In the Netherlands, they have a big scene also for Dutch speaking comedians. And, you know, those people are the ones making, if you can speak the local language, you end up making the biggest money. Wow. Because you, 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 you end up on TV and you do all of that stuff. Yeah, like, <clears throat> we were talking about London. Yeah. They have... Um, they they watch a lot of American podcasts, so they get oh. our humor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Brussels, they're not really versed on the podcast scene. No, America. they do. They do. The question is, do they speak uh, enough English to get into those podcasts? Right. So Belgian people will listen to podcasts, for sure. Everyone mm -hmm. is listening to something and watching content. But if they didn't get a good education in terms of learning English, they're going to be like, yeah, I, I can watch that. But I, like, for example, they'll tell me, I can, I can watch some of your jokes because you, you do simple jokes that I can get, not all of them. But I, I'd love, but I can understand, this. I can see that this guy's funny, but I, I don't really understand everything he's saying. Right, right. He's talking too fast, or it's, it's hard and to And they follow. might not, and, and, yeah. and then in America, we got a yeah. lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of slang. Yeah. But, that that y'all might not get. But like, Belgium is, is divided, like, it's more complicated than what I'm, but if you simplify, there's a huge uh, Dutch-speaking scene. Mm -hmm. It's called Flemish, because it's, it's, a, it's a dialect, it's Dutch with a different accent. And then there's a French scene. And all of the Dutch people speak English fluently. Oh, wow. They all speak English. Nice, nice. So most of the shows in English in Belgium are going to be in the Flemish areas. Gotcha. And, there's, and they will get everything you're talking about. You just need to maybe slow down by 10%. Just make sure. That's or, not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. So you were talking about missing your family and everything when you worked abroad. Yeah. Uh, so what's your family? Or my, my friends, my, you know. What's your family life like? You have kids, a wife? No, I, I, I had a wife. Uh, What'd you do to no her? kids. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, know how that goes. But, uh, yeah, so that. How but long it didn't were you work. married? Uh, Twelve years. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. And what was her ethnicity? Uh, uh, French English. She was hot. She was cute as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Look at yeah. that. Look at you. She was cute as hell. What, what made y'all end stuff? <laughs> I'm not getting into that into this because she's gonna watch this. Maybe. She ain't gonna watch this. Oh yeah, she would. And why do you care if she watches it? Because I care about her, despite the thing that oh, things so didn't she, go. Oh, so she left you? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, women are going to left you. You know what? That's not even a... What? Yeah, sure. Of course she left you. Yeah. <laughs> Rick Diaz was like, I thought it was the devil do us part, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was more her saying that. It was more her saying that. You know, I, you know like, it's uh, relationship degrades, and uh, it's fine. It's, yeah. uh, it happens. Yeah. Do you want kids? I'd like to have kids, yeah, down the line, yeah. Just get one of these American girls pregnant. <laughs> yeah, that's what people tell me. Hey, get, a, get an American girl, get her pregnant, get a passport. I'm there like, you go. Come down. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> uh, I don't even know if you'll be liable for child support. Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I would rather not get in, like, I, I would rather not get, get into a new whole thing right away. If you want to be American, you got to get a baby mama. No, but my dad, my dad has an American passport. Oh, he does? Yeah. How'd he get it? Well, he moved to America in the 80s uh, when my parents separated, mm -hmm. and he, he met an American lady. They moved, to here, they moved here, and, he, were, and he, stayed, he lived in Los Angeles for over 20 years. When was the last time you saw your dad? Uh, last year. Why he didn't pull up to kill Tony? No, no, right now he lives in Spain. 
Oh, he's back. Oh. Yeah, he retired and now he's just back in Spain. What was he doing in America? He was a prop master in, in Los Angeles. Oh, prop master. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he worked on film. Yep. Came and made that American money and went and retired. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he, he managed to get like uh, in, in the union. So yeah. like he's like, That's okay. good money. Yeah. That's great good. money. But anything you could do in the film union, bro, I think makeup artists get like 700 bucks a day. Yeah, no, while he was working, he was fine. He was only working like part of the year, chilling out part of the rest of the year. And, uh, but, yeah. So do you have any brothers or sisters? I have a half-sister. Half-sister. Yeah. How's our relationship? It's good, it's cordial, but it's distant. We grew apart. We grew entirely apart oh, our okay. whole life. We met late in life. We met when, when I was about 20-something. I knew of her from, mm. since I was a kid, but we only met when I was like in my 20s. Y'all keep in touch on like Instagram or whatnot? Yeah, something like that. And I, I, I've, <coughs> I, I visited her a few times, and uh, like I know what she, how she's doing. Where she live? Uh, south of Boston. Oh, she in Boston? Yeah, so it's, it's, she, she's older than me. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a previous relationship of my, of my dad, and it was, it was, he, 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 she, her mom is American. Oh. So she, she grew up in, in Virginia, I think. Okay. I don't think it was West Virginia. I think it was Virginia. So she kind of like a redneck? <laughs> I guess so, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Depending on what part of Virginia. So. No, I don't think she's a redneck, but, but maybe. Boston, she got a feisty mouth. Oh, uh, for sure. Everybody in Boston got yeah. feisty mouths, bro. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Over there. I like Boston. I loved it when I, I visited. I love, yeah. love shit-talking cities. <laughs> so what's your, what's your uh, favorite city in, in uh, America so far? Well, I've... I've been lucky enough that I've traveled here a lot just for my own uh, vacations and pleasure. Right. So I visited 27 states. Nice. I've been hiking and visiting towns and everything. I'd nice. say I love New York. Just, you know, as a tourist coming into Did New York. Did you do comedy in deal. New York? No, okay. not yet. I, the last time I went to New York was 2019. I had started doing comedy. was like, I'm not touching any of these mics. Right. I'm not ready. I'm New not. York is... New York yeah. is... <clears throat> yeah. That's why you see... Um, all the comics that come from New York, like Shane, mm. you know what I'm saying? Ari, like their last per minute, bro, because that New York scene, you gotta, you gotta keep it choppy. Like, you know, like West Coast, yeah. I started in Atlanta, but then like um, mm -mm. West Coast, I, I pretty much grew up in California, dude. Like West Coast style is a little more laid back, maybe chill on the wall, you know what I'm saying? Sit yeah. down a little bit, talk a little shit. But in New York, you gotta pop, you gotta bring bro. It. They want them pops, they want them LPMs, bro. And that's, that's like, when people always ask me, like, where should I go to get good at? I'm like, New York, bro. Mm. You can hit, like, I think when I was in New York, I was doing, like, five, six shows a night. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, in Austin, you can kind of do that. But they're not, I yeah. mean, they're as good shows or not. You know? Right, 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 right. No, I get it. Yeah, the Austin scene's still growing. Yeah. It's only, what, three years old? Mm. And I mean, for a three-year-old. It's huge. For a three-year-old scene, it, it might be the biggest scene in America. Yeah. Well, it's the most talked about scene in America. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and we got a lot of heavy hitters. Oh, for sure. Shane and Matt McCuster just moved there. And yeah. in the beginning, it was Rogan, Tony, me, Brian Simpson, our son, Derek. Uh, forgive me if I'm missing anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want anybody. Don't Why you didn't say my name? <laughs> I moved up. Yeah, you. Tom. Tom is there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tim Dillon bought a house there. Yeah. But he's never there. He's never there. Tim Dillon. Tim pops in like once every two months. He, I think he loves LA. But I, what I would say, <clears> even the, like, People are not heavy hitters, are, are not as widely known by the general audience, are really good. Like, it's really competitive. When it comes to comedy, bro, yeah. it's, it's so much more than just being funny. It, there's, yeah. like, it's, it's sad to say, but, I mean, it is what it is. Like, in comedy, bro, in order to be somebody, you got to be clickable, likable. You got to have a personality. Because I feel like, because, you know, like, I feel like people fall in love with your personality. Mm-hmm. And then they like your comedy. Like if like somebody can walk on stage, and if you don't like that person, nothing they say is gonna be funny, you know. So I think likability has a lot to do with comedy. Because like if you look at Kevin Hart, he's just likable. You, you can't, yeah, you is, can't yeah. really hate him. I'm, <laughs> I'm not as likable, but I, but I look funny. Yeah, that's all. I, I look. Thing. You know, I'm physically awkward. That's so the, that that's, helps. That's the problem when hot girls want to do comedy. It's like, what are you doing? Yep. Who wants to laugh at you? We all want to have sex with you. Like nobody wants to laugh at you. It's it's harder for them because yeah, they could yeah. be really funny. Yeah. But it's it's distracting. Yeah, it is very distracting. You, mm. you got any um you got any those uh any kill Tony chuckle fuckers yet? I've I've had people approach me, but I'm I'm gonna be honest, I was feeling like I'm I I I, I like women. 
I like flirting, you know, I like, I like, but I don't like the idea that somebody's coming to me only because of something I'm going to tell me. You are European. It was new to me, <laughs> like, this is new to me, so, like, I, I you know, I'm, I'm, I, li I like to meet on a one-to-one on a, on a -one basis of, as, as equals. You're and a romantic see what, what, ass. I am. Man, you got to slap these women and call them a bitch every now and again <laughs> in America, bro. I'm That's what I understood. <laughs> I'm the, the, couple par the couple parties I've been at, I was like, what the hell is going on here? I was just like a bit, like, gotta, I'm, this is not my pace. I got to teach you something. <laughs> I'm just observing what's happening, yeah. I'm not, you know. Some girl, I wouldn't know. Some girl come to Rick Diaz and be like, can I give you hair? He's like, well, I would prefer to go to a restaurant. Yes, that's exactly and, how I feel. And <laughs> walk, walk in the park and really learn you <laughs> before you get... <laughs> I mean, it's more of a, it's more, it's more, it's more, it's more like, let me diagnose your red flags and see what, what I'm getting into before man, I touch you. Ain't no, ain't no red flags, man. Yeah, there are huge red flags. Ain't there. no red flags. If yeah. she's just trying to give you hair, what's the, what, what red flag do you care about? As... The thing is, if, she, if she's just trying to give me head, honestly, I don't think I'm going to come. Oh, damn, well, you're different. Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. I get it. Y'all grew up with a little more morals over there <laughs> I don't know. In, in Brussels. Maybe it's being raised by a single mom. You know, I was right? raised by a single mom. Yeah, well, okay, well, you know. But I ain't turned out no head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to turn it down, but I'm, I feel like it's going to be like, ah, okay, I could, I, could, I could just not deal with you right now and yeah, just jerk off, you know I don't I mean? care about no red flags. <laughs> <laughs> I like red flags. The, yeah. more, the more red flags, the better for me. Yeah, it'll, I, it'll, I've, be, it'll, I, it'll be easier for me to get away from you. I, I'm burnt out from red flags. I'm just like, I'd rather just be like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. I'd bro. rather be treated nicely, respected a little bit, and just I don't chill. want no respect. I want disrespect. <laughs> oh, well, I, I get that. I get that. I, I, I love it in the right context. <laughs> I want know? disrespect. I don't want no respect for women. Yeah. I want disrespect uh, <laughs> with consent. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um... So everything that went down with Kill Tony, yeah. um, how do you feel about the outcome? I like the, the well, I, well, first of all, I feel like the outcome is not finished yet. You know, hopefully. Why not? You know, it's still the, the, the outcome of the challenge itself. Yeah. Or the whole adventure no, the, of Kill the, Tony. No, the, uh, the outcome of the challenge. The outcome of the challenge, yeah. I, I'm, I'm happy with the outcome. But you gave up your golden ticket. Yeah. So now you got to go back in the bucket. Maybe. Maybe yeah. not. We'll see. We'll see. But how do you feel about uh, the outcome as far as New Year's Eve went? You know, I, I lost a golden ticket uh, being in Europe. Um, so realistically, how often am I going to come back to Austin? I see you quite a bit. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Like maybe once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. Then um, <coughs> they have all the golden tickets they have to program. So yeah. they would have to make sure that they could put me on. Right. So it's never guaranteed. So I lost, I lost a little something. But I feel like the Kiltoni family might still like me enough to want right. me in other ways without the golden ticket. Right, will, right. Time will tell if that is it happens or not. Right, right. Um, I feel that. I feel I still feel associated to Kiltoni anyway. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. And I feel like yeah, we mess with you. Yeah. yeah. Like you know, you invited me here. Yeah. You didn't have absolutely. to. I appreciate that, by the way. Because we're gonna kill you. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I'm joking. I've been trying to die for a long time. <laughs> Nobody does it, man. So yeah. they, they know it's worse to keep me alive. <laughs> it's more punishment yeah. to keep me alive than to kill me. But I know I feel like, uh, I, feel, I felt... Um, Do you feel like you should have came out harder on New Year's? No. Because this, no. Is, this, is, no. this is how I feel, Rick. Yeah. Um, you watch boxing? Yep. Yeah. yeah, you have to knock them out and not leave it in the hands yeah. of the judges. You, you, I understand that. You can, if you're fighting, if somebody's a champion, which I, I, Hans I, has been on there for two and a half yeah. years, you, there cannot be a doubt. Well, in my opinion, there was no doubt, but that's my personal opinion. It, it only reflects my opinion and mm. the opinion of the people that were on the table. But <laughs> the, the, um, I thought a lot about what I should do for months, right? I was, first of all, write good jokes or what I think are good jokes. You worked the, all your with, jokes out in Brussels? Yeah, just working out. I worked out. I had like maybe 10 to 15 new minutes. Mm -hmm. I was trying to choose. I'm, I, was, I, I wrote maybe five minutes of roast jokes okay. for Hans. Then I had roast jokes for the panel, for different guests, for whoever was going to be there. Oh, you didn't know who it would be? Oh, yeah, okay. so I was getting ready to whatev for whatever. Right, right. Right, because they, they nobody was telling me anything. I also anticipated they're going to put me on first. They're going to make the, char the, the, the crowd cheer first. What to do if I win? What to do if I lose? You're strategic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so what I thought was I could roast Hans for that minute. Right. But this episode is going to be seen by one to three million people, at least one million at a minimum, so probably way more. Right. 
What do I want to sell? Including, my act? Including Reddit clips? Yeah, yeah. But what do I want to sell? My act mm -hmm. or my roast of hands, Kim? Right. So what I did is I'm going to sell my act and I'm going to say jokes for my fan base mm -hmm. and for the people that are going to like my jokes. If right. they see me roasting hands, then I'm going to be like, yeah, he roasted hands. Maybe I'll win, maybe I won't. And maybe I will get the crowd against me. If I do my act, I'm doing my act. And then I was ready to roast him during the interview portion. Right. But that went haywire. Which, fair know, enough, but you know. I didn't even know y'all had real beef. I, I thought it was just like some... I didn't have beef. I thought it was just like some, some flu gazy stuff until I was like, oh, this is real. It was real for someone, yeah. So what, what made you challenge Hans? There's a mix of things I could tell you off camera and opportunity. Okay. And mostly it's opportunity. So tell me the stuff on camera. The, the stuff on camera is really opportunity. I was there at Kill Tony. Uh, when I get the golden ticket, Tony Hinchcliffe tells me, you can do it four more weeks. Because like, he tells me, you can come back here every week until you go, you're gone. Okay. And I had four more weeks, four more Mondays. So then I go back home, I start preparing my minutes. And as I'm attending every Kill Tony show, by the third one, I see that Jamisha is challenging hands. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and, Jan, and Hans won with a weak minute. Sorry, just it was weak. And right. Tony called him out of it. Like, you barely won that just because Jamisha just burnt it. She crashed. And, and she started strong, but she crashed. And I, you know, I don't know her entire comedy thing, but it wasn't strong enough to beat Hans. Right. And in my mind, I'm like, I could have easily beat him. Any minute I have ready, that's mm -hmm. on lock for me now. And I understand that for him, it's new minutes because right. he, he's... Uh, uh, Worked out set he uses on, on the road. So he has to write new jokes every right. week. So they're not going to be as strong because they're not as developed. Right. But I have so many, such a catalog of jokes that have never been heard on Kill Tony. Do you think that's an unfair advantage on your part, though, where you've only did like four it is, or it was, five minutes it, and Hans has did like hundreds of minutes? It is. Yeah. It is. It is. But <clears throat> I, in, for my own integrity, mm. oh, I think except for one joke I said at New Year's Eve, everything else was new. No, I get no, that. No, I'm just but saying what I'm that. Saying just for me. Is like, no, it was, it was. But in my head, I was like, I could have beat him. Especially, if this is... especially with Hans headlining now. Yeah. And it's like he 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 wants to lead. And it's the same thing for me. Yeah. Like when I go on Kill Tony, it's like I don't want to burn something that I feel is great because people that buy well, tickets to come see me. But it's the same for me. The element of surprise is gone. The, it's it's same for me because but you still it, got a name to make for yourself. Uh, yeah, I have a name to make for myself, but. In a Kill Tony minute for me is about two minutes of normal pacing. So in Kill Tony, I burnt about 12 minutes of material okay. in five shows. Plus the, the answers I said at interviews, I was also bringing in jokes. Okay. So I burnt like 12, like between 10 and 15 minutes of material. Gotcha. Burnt. I mean, not everybody watches Kill Tony. I can still say them. And sometimes some people want to rehear them because right. it's one liner and it's like listening to music. They just like to or hear them. Or just add stuff to it. Yeah, or add stuff to it, whatever I can do. But... But I did use a bunch of minutes that now I'm like, you know, it's, right. it, it, I still struggle with that as well. Yeah. But I thought I could, I could have beat him. And, and I thought, okay, I would like to challenge him because maybe, because also I was asking, since I'm the last golden ticket winner at that point, now Heath won one. I thought, he hasn't given a golden ticket in a while. Mm -hmm. I'm the latest one. It seems like uh, internet, internet is liking me. Okay. And so I asked, am I going to be on the New Year's Eve show? And the answer I got is like, well, we have to see. And I was like, well, I'm going to get myself on the New Year's Eve show. Ah, you be thinking. Yeah, I be thinking. <laughs> yeah. Rick said, I be thinking. I'm, well, I'm going to do what I can do because I'm going to go back to Brussels and I'm going to be forgotten. Right. I'm not going to stay in this scene and, and try to have a, more other opportunities to be and meet people and mm. network. I'm going to, I have to go back to my job. Right, right. So what can I do while I'm here right. to be seen? Smart. You know. <coughs> That's smart, bro. And so... I tr and I tried, and honestly, it wasn't easy like mentally for me to do the challenge because I am an introvert. I just want to come on stage, do my jokes, maybe you know, mess around with the crowd a little bit. But not really do the... But go like, you know, say promo lines and challenge in front of a crowd. I was scared out of my mind. Like, this could completely backfire. You know, mm. I was just like, pushing like inside my head. I was like, do it because it's your one shot. It's right, your one shot. Right. It's your one shot. Do it. Just do it. Do it. And I had jokes that I didn't even dare say. I had more. I was just like, really? I, still, I still was like, I was afraid of saying what I said. So did you know about Kill Tony before you came to America? I knew about Kill Tony. Right. I wasn't watching every episode every week in its entirety. I was right. watching, you know, clips and segments. I right. knew about all of you guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what's up, bro. Yeah. And your, your following grew a lot. 
Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm grateful to everybody that follow, that's following yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, and you've been only been doing comedy, what, five years? Yeah, a little less. Yeah. So your thing is one-liners? So far, yeah. And I'm, what's the longest set you've done? Uh, 45. With, just, with crowd work. With just, oh, with crowd work. Okay. With a little crowd work. Those yeah. one-liners. What's that? What's that? Uh, Jimmy Carr? No. Jimmy Carr. Hedberg. Uh, Mitch Hedberg. Right. Yeah, Steven like Ray. the one like uh, even um, Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah, Rodney Kinda Dangerfield. With the the one liners. I'm just like, that's hard. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard to come up with a good one. People, if I see people on Reddit, are like, he's always the same shtick. And all that. First of all, I have a shtick for a reason. I like it. It's, it's right. a, it are, they are topics I enjoy. Right. Right. And second of all, yeah, they're hard to find. They're yeah. just hard. I try to I try to do like these mini three to five minute. Like, but, but but your laughs per minute are, are higher than me. You know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah. not, I try to do like... You, you can find other yeah, it's, it's so hard when I go and kill Tony now because now I'm like trying to develop with me headlining more and stuff yes. and putting on a good show. I try to do like a five minute chunk and have like nine of those. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and then when it's like, damn, I got to go to kill Tony. So now I got to revert back to 60 seconds. Like, what am I about to say? Will I reach that punchline before the 60 seconds is up? It's just like... it's. It's a good thing to challenge yourself with, man. It's kind of like it's kind of like um, now that I'm used to doing long sets. Like if I go to the mothership and and you know do a spot for ten minutes, I'm like, what the hell am I about to talk about? You know. <laughs> it's a, it's a, I knew my format was good for Kill Tony. Mm -hmm. so yeah, like I knew. Yeah, I was, I was, I was one liners. The key to kill Tony yeah. is being awkward, weird, very mm -hmm. funny, um, a story. You know what I'm saying? Because like if you follow Kill Tony, Tony's a big wrestling fan. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he wants a personality. You know what I mean? Like, you don't got to be the... You, you can bomb your minute and have... I've seen people bomb their minute and have a great interview where people are like, oh, yeah. shit, I like this guy now. Mm -hmm. Or you can... I've seen people do very great during their minute and bomb the interview. And it's like, what the fuck? You have no personality. Well, on the, on the golden... On the day that I got, the, that I got pulled and I got the golden ticket... I, I told I told myself, well, sign up for the thing. Most likely, you're, you won't get picked. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just statistics. Right. Um, but still, like, get your minute ready. Be ready to go in case they call you. And dress the part. Like, dress like you want to be dressed on that stage right. if you had a choice to choose your clothes. Right. So I was everything was by design. Nice. So the moment they, they called my name up, I, was like, I went in. You're very... Talking to you, I, I see... I see you're strategic. Only I've just been reading about, you know, watching podcasts, talk, seeing comedians talk about how they approach their comedy. I'm like, yeah, how you dress matters. How you get ready matters. How you like, on on the day of the New Year's Eve challenge. First of all, I asked Yo, I asked uh, Yoni, uh, hey, can I come on the thirtieth to watch? And he said, you can come. So I came on the 30th early, because why? I wanted to get a, a, a sense of the whole arena, right. where everything was, mm -hmm. so I would have no surprises the next day. I right. didn't have to find my way. I knew, that, I knew the size of the stage. I knew the distance of the stage. Right. I'd be on stage on the 30th. I listened to all the, all the experienced comedians do their sets, how they were, at, what, at what pace they were talking, yeah. how they were enunciating. How they were pronoun you know, so, so on the 31st, I knew where everything was. I still came at like 1.30 p.m. Oh, wow. I just wanted to stay there and just like watch, 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 set, feel the crowd, feel the crowd, feel the crowd. Nice. And my main concerns were not winning or losing. My main concerns were don't bomb. Right. Do not bomb. And pray that you don't get shit on by the people at the table. Right, right. And yeah, that, and that, went well. it, that arena yeah. was fun, but when it came to roasting, I, the feedback speakers, I couldn't, Yeah. I was trying to roast hearing the laughter of the crowd like oh that was a good joke they just said okay cool let me try it was difficult roasting mm -mm. on that arena what did you have a hard time hearing what anybody on the panel was saying uh like when i when i went out to watch the, is that on the 30th or the 31st 31st i sort of was okay i could hear even when you were on stage kind of yeah. i feel like we needed an earpiece i but, thought yeah it would have been better but. yeah i couldn't hear shit that's why I was like, man, what the hell am I doing? Like, I could definitely hear Hans uh, attacking me. <laughs> I could hear every word he said. To no, me. if you're not yeah. on stage, it's no, fine. No, no, when I was uh, sitting behind Tony, oh. I heard that uh, very clearly. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Where, whereas I was hearing, I was uh, I overheard Tony and Red Band talk about how on the 30th, they couldn't hear the comedians no. as they were talking. They were, they were trying to guess whether they had been funny or not by the crowd's reaction. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I was listening to roast jokes what Shane and Matt and Tony were making, mm. 
according to the crowd, like, okay, that was a good one. The crowd's like, I couldn't hear, I couldn't hear them at all. It was, I'm like, damn, what the hell? I roasted a. I don't know. <coughs> To me, I was, I did, I ended up like, for me, I ended, I felt like, okay, I, I represented myself well. I, my act is out there for people mm -hmm. to see. I did what I could. I feel like I had a couple of uh, good moments or a clippable right. or a uh, merchable. Right. Um, but I didn't want to, I, I, my hope was at the end of this challenge to walk out with, hey, it's over. Let's, let's, let's be friends. Like I always wanted right, to be, right, you right. know, right. I didn't. Are you and him cool now? Huh? Are y'all cool now? Or have you talked to him? Well, I've been unable to talk to him because he, you know, I think he, no, he, we talked to a little bit after the show, uh -huh. but because uh, of the chaos around us, yeah. I, I thought maybe it's not the best time to talk. Right. Because it's, first of all, people are listening. So right. it's not the right. best. Uh, right, right, right. It's not the best venue to, to have any sort of chat. And also there was a, his girlfriend was there. Yeah. And I think I should have a conversation just him and yeah, I. Yeah, when, when, when men you know. got their girl, they can, yeah, yeah. It, it can go up real I'm not going to judge anything, but <laughs> I'm just saying when people are there, it's just, it's better to just cut that out and yeah. just have a private yeah, chat. Yeah, you, you see, you're smart, you're smart, you're smart. Well, you know, I've been I, in fights before. <laughs> yeah. I've been win? in arguments. Are you, fist fight? No, 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 like a, like a verbal arguments, oh, you know. okay. Yeah. How you be yelling? How am I being yelled at? How are you when you're yelling? I, I I withdraw. Oh, you know. <laughs> I shut up. I just I just I'm just trying to let the water just go. I just, let it just pass. Just pass. That's right. That's right. Well, appreciate you for joining me today, man. Hey, appreciate it, man. Hey, man, and thanks for some insight. Thank you on so much. How you feel and how to thank you. I feel great. I love Kill Tony. Thank go. you for having me. Of course, Honestly, buddy. I love you. Now go kill it with Russell Peters. I will. That's yeah. the plan. There you go, bro. Thank you so yeah. much.